got a caboose. We're going by the west side of Harmony, down the main. And we're going to pull up to Northampton Street and stop to flag the crossing. Stopped at the Northampton Street crossing. Our train is going to get off, flag the traffic, make sure it's stopped, then we're going to proceed. Next, we pass by the Team Yard and the Industries here at Prosperity. Head around the curve. Hi everybody, uh, Bob Stafford here, Train Master Bob. And it's uh, time for an update of what I've gotten done really about the last month and a half. Well, you know, a lot of outside work's been going on. And my myothenia gravis has been flaring up the last month. These solar flares have just been hard on my immune system and uh, I just haven't had a lot of energy. So the projects I've really gotten done here is uh, the two biggest ones is uh, I reworked the grade on the end scale of trackage. So the so as you're pulling up the up and down the hill going underneath the HO trackage, I was able to reduce the grade so the engines can pull uh, bigger trains now on that grade. And the other thing is I added about seven foot of six and a half inch wide bench work at the east end of Wilkesbury, and that's going to allow for a long tail track to switch into the future freight house and also it's going to allow me to put a produce track in to spot uh, refrigerator cars or produce on. And I've been messing around a little bit with the details on engine 660 yet trying to get that family look uh, make the details pop out a little bit because everything in black just I, they were there but you couldn't see them so I'm been playing with that a little bit and I'll show you what I've accomplished there. And also I uh, had my first operating session. Had two uh, fellows come over, Alex and Jim, and we operated uh, a bit here. Jim bought his dead rail locomotives over that he wanted to try out and, and we uh, used his lo locomotive and learned a little bit about dead rail. Uh, not for me. It just doesn't work on a switching railroad like this really well. Uh, the response with the locomotives just wasn't there. So, you know, just keep the DCC until things maybe in the future for, will improve for dead rail. I'm sure they will, but right now it's not for me and I have no interest in changing. Too old for that, guys. So that's basically uh, what I've been doing since the last update. And I'll go around and show you a few of the things that have been done. This is where I adjusted the grade on the end scale. The end scale is down here, it goes underneath the HO track, it goes inside the helix. And I was able to raise that uh, grade up a bit. So now an in-scale trains come through here. You can, so you can pull a larger train up the hill. The other end scale project I did was I put hand throws onto the three main line switches, the 
crossover between the two main tracks and a switch that's going into the five track stub storage yard. And what I found out when I did this was when I uh, took the pins out that were holding the, the uh, tracks and points in place at the storage yard, uh, as soon as I threw the switch, I had a short. Well, I forgot that you had to put insulated rail joiners in because it's a, the uh, insul, you know, it's the Electro Frog Pico switch. So the frog is live and I needed an insulated rail joiner and I forgot all about it. And now I had a short. And in order to keep the curve from kinking at the switch, I had soldered the rail joiner uh, together between the flex track and the switch. So I just couldn't take it apart and put an insulated joiner in. So I had to get the Dremel tool out and I had to go cut myself a gap and that solved my short problem. Here in my workshop area where I saved the old bath yard from the old layout. I started making some modifications a couple months ago. I added uh, the piece back there by the pegboard, extended that piece of the bench work out. And now I've come over here and I added another six foot across here and it's Oh, what is it now? Six or seven foot across here. This is six and a half inches wide here. So what I'm going to be having here is freight house is going to go here eventually. And we'll have two tracks going into the freight house parallel to the main line. And then I'm going to have a third track here, which will be the produce track. Uh, my dad was a truck driver and he uh, drove for Raymond Bolzen in Great Meadows and for Jack Rogers in Townsbury, New Jersey. And they were both uh, produce uh, haulers. And uh, Raymond Bolzen even had, had his own farm. And I'm used to, I just got the memories of my dad riding with him on, on weekends when I was out of school. Or summertime and there were certain uh, places especially the produce yard of the Pennsylvania Railroad back then in uh, Washington DC and the Pennsylvania Railroad produce yard in Philadelphia where uh, we'd uh, come into there to be an office building uh, and you go in and you see the broker the broker then would uh, send his guys out with you and direct you to a refrigerator car and you back your trailer up to the refrigerator car and and they load uh, produce directly from the refrigerator car into your trailer. Well, that's what this is going to be. That'll be the memory from uh, back then when I was a kid. So, and I, and let me show you here going the other way. The changes I still got to make. My next project out here will be to take this section here and which is these two tracks and I'm going to rip this out. It's all built on foam and I'm going to rip this foam out. It's not too stable. It's actually beginning to warp forward. So you see these freight cars, how they're tipping. And I'm going to replace it with wooden brake, uh, with wooden bench work and the uh, plywood top and I'll be extending the lead coming out of the freight house over this way and uh, put a crossover track here into it and build interchange tracks up here to the Bill Shoops Baltimore Lehigh Railroad give me another connection to go south with this is the area where the cement mill originally was. Uh, I'm going to be ripping this, most of this out, redoing it, and putting my anthracite coal breaker in here. So that's the plan. So um, here to eventually um, for uh, changing around this end of Wilkesbury.
We were in the yard at Wilkes-Barre during our last operating session. The interchange with the Lehigh Valley and the Pennsylvania Railroad at Buttonwood had been pulled and the um, crew blocked the cars. We have here we have a two car set out for Shonersville. We have a block of cars going to Jersey City and we have a block of cars here going to the New Haven Railroad at Maybrook which will be set out at Richards. And we're going to now build the Wilkes-Barre to Jersey City train. We'll begin our our trip by uh, picking our power up. The uh, firemen and the engineer have completed their inspection of the outbound locomotives. They've done their walk around inspection and the set and release on the brakes and the power is all ready to go. There's no defects were noted. So we're going to pull out, out and come on up to the yard. And we have to stop and line the switch. Okay, the head brakeman's lined the switch. We're going to be, we'll be pulling up the yard lead. And we're going to stop clear of the four track switch and we're going to leave our caboose on the lead here. And our power is going to run up through track five which is a clear alley. And track four has the uh, block for Jersey City in it. Here we see our power coming up track five, the east end of the yard. The train crew is dropped off. As we're pulling up here and as line the switches up the lead, we're going into track number two first. Okay, the rear brakemen's come out from in between after cutting in the air. And he's given us a signal to pull forward. We're going to pull out a two track and go down the lead. Head brakeman's up at the switch to uh, track four. And we've got the stop signal. Okay, head brakeman's line to switch into track four, and he's giving us a hand signal to come back slow. And we come back to a joint. On our Maybrook block. Okay, the rear brakeman was back there at the joint. He's giving us a sign that he's going in between. 
going in between, couple up the air hoses and cut in the air. Now come back out, give this a full head signal. Brakeman's down there at the switch. And he gives us a signal to stop. Brakeman's giving us a signal to shut back. Okay, you go on the ground, the rear brakeman is at the joint. Bring this back. And we couple in to our Jersey City block. We're going to stretch it. Make sure we have it all. And we do. And the rear brake vent also locked this block. Check that the air hoses were all coupled up and knocked the handbrakes off of it. Okay, the brake vent's giving us the signal that he's going in between to cut in the air. Let's come back out. We wait a moment for our air to pump up through our pickup here. And next we're going to be getting to shove back to our caboose that's sitting back on the lead. Okay, we got our air pumped up. Conductors on the ground, giving us a signal to come back, being relayed to the head end by the two brakemen on the ground. Since our engines around are out of sight of the rear end of the train. And we got a signal to come back slow. Okay, we're going to a joint with our caboose. Our conductor is giving a signal that he's going in between to cut in the air. He's come back out, giving us a signal to stretch. Gotta stretch now and make sure we got the caboose. Okay. Got the train is complete. Now we're gonna do our initial terminal air test. Train crew is going to walk the train. We're going to be checking for uh, any uh, bad order safety appliances and they'll be uh, checking that the brakes are set up on all of the cars. Normally uh, two trainmen will uh, do an initial terminal air test like this by one will start from the back, one will start from the front, they'll walk towards each other, they'll meet somewhere in the middle and they've ascertained that all the brakes are set up, the cars are safe to move. Then they'll cross over to the other side, give the hand signal to the head end to release the brakes, and they'll each start walking back towards the caboose and towards the engine, checking that all the brakes have been released. Now as the train leaves, you'll notice the different colored tags on top of the cars. 
In order to quickly begin operations, I just uh, made the uh, car uh, tabs that I just put on these cars. Blue is for Jersey City, orange is for Maybrook, green is for Shonersville, the three locations I have ready now. Very, very simple to do. Just use the evergreen channel and evergreen uh, I beams that I had on hand and here our train is departing Wilkesbarian and heading eastbound. Well I think I finally achieved the look on engine 660 that I was trying to get. On the head end here I uh, took the bell and I painted the bell brush painted with to me, a XF56 metallic gray. And on the glad hands of the MU hoses and air hoses, I uh, painted them with to me, a XF16 flat aluminum that made these pop out. And I painted the handrails white. And I think now we've, we've got the uh, look that I wanted. And this is how the rest of the fleet's going to now be detailed and painted. I hope this video gave you some ideas of how you can easily set up operations on your railroad when you're just starting out and you just got part of it built. You, using the uh, color tabs is a really quick way of getting things going when you just got a uh, simple operation. And it saves you the time it takes to make waybill hooks for all your industries, making the car cards, folding them up, taping them together, building card boxes. You know, that all can come in the future. Right now, we just want to get out there. We want to run some trains. We've been working on this thing for months and months and months, right? So now we want to get out there. We just want to operate and invite a couple friends over and have some fun with them. So. So that's uh, it for the month. So this is Bob saying so long and remember if you found this useful to please subscribe to the channel and give me a thumbs up. And of course we all know model railroading is the best hobby in the world so get out there and run some trains, build something, just have some fun. Bye.